you know, he picked the wrong family and uh, not scared of a conflict. And we're not scared, we're not running, we're coming at him. guys it's Frankie welcome to the think tank so today we will be going live at 9 mountain standard time and we're going to cover the morning session of um, the Letitia case Gannon Stouch's stepmom who unlived him in a, oh, a horrific way but I haven't touched on Lori Daybell so I thought before I do that put out a quick video um, just talking about the fact that they are in today three of deliberate or not deliberations, but of jury selection and things are coming along. It's although it seems like it's slow, it's faster than it might have been had they not have taken that death penalty or sorry, that death sentence or the option of off the table a little bit faster that they don't have to find people that have to agree on that. And probably a little bit faster that her and uh, Chad are having separate trials. So let's take a look at what we got yeah, going here. Okay, what have I done here? Of course. Mr. Daybell, do you understand the allegations from both counts that have been brought against you? Yeah. The court is going to set bail in the amount of $1 million. Yeah. I'm going to pop back here. We'll try this again. I do you believe I bumped it? We don't want Chad quite yet, do we? I can't imagine having to sift through all of the crap that this trial has uh, brought out. Connect Flex, one-stop shop for CTV advertising. Reach consumers across 89% of all U.S. households. Turn off the volume for that. And for her. Lori Vallow, the mother who once lived in Chandler, on trial accused of killing her two children. Today, the so-called doomsday mom watched jurors who could potentially decide her fate. Fox 10 investigator Justin Lum reports from the latest inside the eight county courthouse. On day one, we got a look at Lori Vallow, the so-called doomsday mom, via Zoom from a remote courtroom. Right between her and watched the jury selection intently. This is happening four hours away from where these three alleged murders happened and residents are ready for her to stand trial. I think that everybody in this community knows that if dead kids are buried on your property, they you know about it. Krista and Katie Weaver visit the makeshift memorial for J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan. They remember when authorities discovered the kids' remains on this property in Salem, Idaho. The children's mother, Lori Vallow, now begins her trial accused of first-degree murder in their deaths and murder conspiracy in the death of Tammy Daybell, the first wife of her alleged co-conspirator and husband, Chad Daybell. The Daybell proof is where Tammy died, and out back is where J.J. and Tylee were found in June 2020. 
I mean, the trial is a good thing and, and we hope there's justice here, but will it ever change what happened in this community? No. I mean, it's still very palpable here. In order to find a fair and impartial jury, the judge on the case decided to move the trial to Ed County, Idaho's largest county. People were angry and upset and also, I think, understood. You know, there's kind of both layers of... I just can't imagine how this community feels knowing what has happened in that town and on Chad Davis' property. Obviously, how would she get a fair trial here? On Monday, the judge, prosecution, and defense asked jurors several questions. For example, could they assess circumstantial evidence, handle graphic evidence, be fair and unbiased, and have they seen media coverage of this case at all? Back in Madison and Fremont counties, the tight-knit communities affected by these tragedies are still trying to heal. I feel like a conviction will go a long way in helping people around here to feel better about what happened. The jury selection continues tomorrow morning. So far, 17 jurors have made it out of three groups. The court wants to hit 42 and whittle that number down to a final 18. That includes 12 jurors and six alternates. We'll keep you updated in and out of the courtroom. In Boise, just... So they're hoping that that will happen today, that they'll be able to get all of that kind of whittled down. That's... See if I can get this a little bit bigger for us. Fox is always in my description. So please just check them out. I get a lot of really good information from them. So they're saying the trial of a woman charged and the three unalivings in what prosecutors say was a doomsday focused mm -hmm. plot began Monday. So attorneys have been asking potential jurors if they would have trouble or trouble being impartial even after viewing autopsy photos of the children. Oh my God, I would not want to be there. This is a case that deals with unaliving. This is a case where two of the alleged victims are underage children. Prosecutor Rob Wood has told the panel of potential jurors warning them that some of the evidence could be emotionally charged. Absolutely. So the prosecutor charged Jory Vallow Daybell and her husband, Chad Daybell, with conspiracy, unaliving, and grand theft in connection with the deaths of J.J. Vallow and uh, Tylee, the two youngest children. And so J.J. was seven years old, Joshua Vallow, J.J., and his older sister, Tylee Ryan, who was almost 17. And they have also charged them in connection with the death of Tammy Daybell, which is Chad's first wife, who somehow managed to, at a young age in her late 40s, managed to pass away in her sleep. And as far as I know, there was not any kind of in-depth autopsy to look at her. They were calling it natural. That's pretty young for it to be natural. So we do know that as a result, the seventh district judge Stephen Boyce moved the trial more than 200 miles away to the city of Boise where they're thinking that maybe the jurors won't be as biased. The defendants have both pled not guilty, but Valo Daybell's trial begins Monday, which they're talking about this past Monday with jury selection. It isn't easy to look at. They're talking about the autopsy photos. One potential juror said she had two elementary school children and she believed it would be difficult for her to look at that sort of evidence. Still, she said she would try to put her feelings aside and remain impartial. Damn, that would not be easy. How do you be impartial? I wouldn't be on the jury. Authorities summoned 1,800 potential jurors to the courthouse in late March, requiring each of them to complete a 20-page questionnaire in hopes of winnowing anyone out unable to fairly try the case. Defense and prosecutors began questioning the remaining jury pool in effort to pick 12 jurors and six alternates. So they do want 18. 
This is not going to be easy, is it? I would, like I say, it's a little bit easier because they took that uh, DP off. But with that said, there's still um, a lot of things to overcome as far as jurors go. Cult mom, they're calling her. Jury selection for the trial of cult mom Lori Vallow is centered to enter its third day in court as they struggle, struggle to find jurors who are not familiar with the case. And we know again that she is charged with the unaliving of Tylee and JJ, as well as Chad's wife. And uh, I don't know. I know that there's also um, something going on with her ex-husband that her brother unalived. And we have seen video of that. Several jurors have said they have seen several media reports about the high-profile case, while others say it would be very difficult to balance the trial, which is expected to take about eight weeks. Another two-month trial. So that's getting... These two trials, both of them, Lori Daybell and Letitia uh, Stouch, both of them are long trials again. Both may be surpassing the length that the Murdoch trial was. And that was a long one. Sure felt long. So it looks like yesterday, 25 jurors were pre-selected. Both sides will continue working towards the initial goal of 42. And they will be further questioned and bring the number down to 18, as we know. So key points, jury selection begins for Lori, Lori Vello's trial. Lori Vello on trial for the unalivings of JJ and uh, Tylee. JJ and Tylee's remain found on Daybell's property, June, 2020. It took nine months to find them. Vello believed JJ and Tylee had become zombies. Yes, that's right, zombies. Oh my word. Tammy Daybell did pass away 49 years old. And that was only a month after the kids went missing. So yeah, Lori Vallow is also charged with her ex-husband Chad's, sorry, her ex-husband's unaliving in Arizona. So they are charging her with that. I thought, you know what, yesterday I was a little bit confused with some of the stuff I read, but that straightens it right out is charged so that explains a lot does it not so the charges against lori the jazz has outlined the charges to the prospective jurors here are the charges two counts of unaliving murder of the deaths of <laughs> okay deaths of jj and tylee i am having a hell of a time with all of these words that youtube doesn't like Three counts of conspiracy to commit and JJ, Tylee, and uh, Tammy Daybell. So where's hubby? Two counts of grand theft in connection with social security benefits following the deaths of JJ and Tylee. And as we know, Lori has pled not guilty to all these charges. So that's what they'll do today is they will spend their time whittling down what they have trying to get it to those 18 jurors, the 12, and then the, the six alternate. With, with COVID going around, we found out with the Murdoch trial that having all those extras sitting there for the trial is a great idea because they got down in that Murdoch trial to one extra juror. With these long trials, so many different things can happen. Someone can get sick. Someone in their family can get sick. There is an abundance of reasons why a jury might lose one juror and have to bring in an alternate. So, again, I think that's a wise maneuver showing and knowing what these juries can be like with these long trials. So, hopefully... That means that opening statements will be right around the corner. And I'll do my best to get as accurate as I can out of that case. No cameras and no audio. So we're basically going by whatever 
they can do as far as taking notes and memory, whatever they can to get the information over to us. They are sitting in kind of um, like a closed in area, able to watch, but they're not even in the um, audience there or in the gallery. So yeah, that's what they're doing today, friends, is more jury selection, possibility of opening statements, but I'm not expecting that to happen. So whichever way it goes, I will let you know. And I'm looking forward to seeing you. We're doing that live back over on Letitia's case at 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. So pop over and see us. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. <laughs>